Hi, grade five. Today's lesson is very, very important and interesting. We are mainly going to talk about seed plants. We're going to talk about how they reproduce and their life cycle. So it's going to be divided into two videos. This is part one, and then we will have another video to continue the topic. As we already know, the plant kingdom is made up of two kinds of plants, seed plants and seedless plants. Seed plants are also vascular. They are the conifers and the flowering plants. Seedless plants can be vascular and non-vascular. And some examples are the moss, fern, hornworts, and liverworts. So we already covered this and we should know it. Now, we want to talk a little bit about seed versus seedless plants. Of course, in the world, seed plants are much, much more than seedless plants. Seed plants have an advantage. That's why it's called seed power, because they are stronger than spores. Seeds have an advantage over spores. Okay, this is why when you look around you, and if I ask you to name a plant, most of the plants you will name and see around you are seed plants. Now, why do seeds have an advantage over spores? We're going to discuss this now. Seeds have an advantage over spores for many reasons. First of all, they are protected by a tough seed coat, while spores are not. This seed coat is like just like how you wear a jacket in winter to keep you warm. Plants or seeds, they have a seed coat and it protects them. You know, they can't germinate in the cold weather, so sometimes they can wait for a long time, waiting to germinate because they are protected by the seed coat. So they can last a long time while waiting to germinate, unlike spores, okay? And uh, they can easily spread to new places because, you know, animals eat fruits, they swallow the seeds, and then from their dropping or their fe feces, they can uh, land the seeds in a new place, therefore giving it a chance to spread and uh, and germinate in a whole new uh, place where there where it's not crowded okay so the seed coat and they also have stored food to help them survive while they're waiting to germinate they can spread easily because animals are attracted to them because they are inside of fruits so this helps them Unlike spores, they don't have this advantage. They don't have a seed coat. They don't have stored food. They only will germinate if they land in a really damp uh, place or else they won't germinate. That's why seeds have an advantage. So again, why are seeds more powerful than spores? Some of the reasons, unlike spores, seeds can spread by animals and you know plants need space they can't land where their mother plant is because it would be too crowded it's very important for a seed to travel to a whole new place and we know that animals help uh, help uh, to do this okay also the seed coat and the stored food it helps to keep the embryo the embryo is the part that's going to become a whole new plant it's the green part in the picture so it keeps the embryo from drying out and it protects it if it's too cold outside while it's waiting to germinate while the spore of course it doesn't have this advantage now we're going to see two new science terms okay as you know, we already know this, there's two types of seed plants, but now we're just going to give them scientific names, okay? Because, you know, we're in grade five now and we have to take more and more scientific terms. The angiosperms is the scientific name for flowering plants. And the gymnosperms is the scientific name 
for conifers so in many science books or if you're watching science videos you probably won't hear conifers and flowering plants you're going to hear more scientific names like angiosperms and gymnosperms again angiosperms are flowering plants and gymnosperms are the conifers angiosperms are all around us okay so it's mostly 85 percent of the plants in the world are angiosperms for example the oak tree which makes the acorn fruit you can see here in the picture on the bottom is a flowering plant tomatoes cucumbers everything you eat except for pine nuts they come from angiosperms everything you eat again except for pine nuts comes from angiosperms which are flowering plants so angiosperms they belong to the group of seed plants all angiosperms share two important characteristics they make flowers of course and they produce seeds that are enclosed in fruits because as we know flowers are going to change into fruits because of pollination and we're going to add a new process called fertilization so it's two things that help to change a flower into a fruit in angiosperms first pollination which you already know about fertilization is the new item we are going to add in this lesson gymnosperms this word really means naked seeds okay because the seeds are covered by nothing they're not covered by an ovary which grows into a fruit okay they're just naked seeds just seeds and cones okay so the gymnosperms uh, they are the cone bearing plants like the cedar and the pine and the spruce and the fir and they usually have needle-like leaves thin needle-like leaves they are evergreen plants that means they don't change color with every season they don't lose their leaves their leaves don't turn yellow or orange okay they have needle like leaves and they are evergreen that means they're green all year long they make cones and their seeds are inside of the cones well, not covered by any kind of fruit so in gymnosperms we would never see a fruit and we would never see a flower so this is a comparison between gymnosperms and angiosperms gymnosperms again means naked seeds that means the seeds aren't covered or protected or surrounded by any by an ovary or by a fruit okay they're just naked seeds found in cones while the angiosperms the seeds are protected first by the ovary and then the ovary will grow and become a fruit gymnosperms they don't make any flowers while the angiosperms of course they make flowers examples of gymnosperms are like pine trees and any plant that makes cones like cedar as well angiosperms on the other hand are all flowering plants any plant that makes flowers is an angiosperm you know flowers come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and colors so most of the plants in the world are flowering plants that means angiosperms they're in green here in the pie chart 85 percent gymnosperms the conifers are just 15 percent okay they both make seeds but the seeds of angiosperms they have an advantage over the seeds of gymnosperms okay because they are covered by fruits and so they can easily spread to new places not, not unlike the seeds of conifers which usually birds are not attracted to uh, birds are attracted to flowers and fruits and not to cones so this is going to help the seeds of angiosperms to spread to a new space where they can germinate most of the seeds of the gymnosperms of conifers the cone just drops right below the mother plant and so it would be impossible for them to germinate because you know they need space they're going to grow into tall trees so most of the seeds actually will not germinate because they don't really travel 
to new places. Of course, they can travel, but not as much as angiosperms. So now we are comparing the seeds of angiosperms and the seeds of gymnosperms. In the beginning of the video, we compared seeds and spores. We said seeds have an advantage over spores. Now we are saying the seeds of angiosperms have an advantage over the seeds of gymnosperms because animals can easily spread them to new places where they can grow, okay? You can see here the dog has these are seeds that are stuck to animal's fur and when he will travel to a new place he will shake them off they will drop in a whole new space where they can grow and of course when uh, birds swallow uh, fruits or eat fruits they will swallow the seeds and they will the droppings of the birds are going to drop the seed in a whole new place these are the most common conifers remember all conifers are evergreen trees with needle leaves okay the cedar the spruce the fir and the pine are the most common conifers or gymnosperms now we're going to talk about angiosperms and sexual reproduction in angiosperms they reproduce sexually just like we do so there's a sperm and there's an egg and they need to join with each other to produce a seed okay when you guys were in grades three and four we just said that seeds are made after pollination or pollen is going to change into a seed after pollination happens but now we are going to add a very important step which is fertilization we cannot have seeds okay the seed is the baby the baby plant we can't have seeds unless fertilization happens in sexual reproduction there's fertilization in angiosperms so this is what we're going to start talking about okay you guys already know that flowers pollination will happen in flowers where pollen is gonna move from one a female part to the other female part from one pistol to the other pistol with the help of insects and this is what you guys know and after pollination the fruits uh, are going to have seeds inside them but now something and a missing step is here which is fertilization okay not only does pollination happen we are going to study that a very important step is going to take place inside of the ovary inside of the female part which is fertilization and this is going to be in our next session so pollination followed by fertilization here you can see a flower becoming a fruit you guys already know that every fruit was once a flower okay every fruit has seeds in it and it was once a flower fruits and seeds are formed because of pollination and fertilization we have many many types of angiosperms as i told you anything you eat whether it's lettuce cucumbers tomatoes avocados uh, papaya any anything is an angiosperm so here i just put a few few examples because there's endless uh, types of angiosperms that we can name i put some things you guys might like mistaken for example the maple grass this is a common mistake because uh, students usually don't see the flowers that grass make okay grass is actually a flowering plant it's an angiosperm and the maple tree as well the oak tree the oak tree of course is a angiosperm pumpkin is an angiosperm here you can see the flower becoming a fruit because of pollination and fertilization okay so to start before we can understand fertilization we have to understand the parts of the flower and angiosperms okay of course there are the petals and the sepal the sepal just holds all the parts of the flower okay it's on the bottom the two green leaves on the bottom petals you know that they attract insects so that pollination can happen now the most important parts most flowers have a male and a female part inside of the same flower okay the male part is the stamen all of it is called the stamen and the female part is the pistil so it's very important to understand these so we can understand pollination and fertilization 
Now, the male part, which is the stamen, is made up of several parts. There's the anther on top. There's the filament, which is the green stick that holds the anther. Now, the anther is very, very important because it makes the pollen grains. And inside of the pollen grains are the microscopic sex cells, the male sex cells, called the sperm okay we never used to say this in grades three and four we just said pollen okay but now we have to know what is inside of this yellow powder this yellow powder the pollen it contains the male sex cell or the sperm just like in animals now the female part as we said all of it is called the pistil but it's also made up of several parts the top part is the stigma it's the sticky part that traps the pollen which contains the sperm the style is the tube that sends the sperm inside of the pollen down to the ovary the ovary is a very important part because it's going to become a fruit but why is the ovary important inside of the ovary the ovary contains ovules okay and the ovules contain the female sex cells the eggs okay so we have sperm inside of the pollen and we have eggs inside of the ovules which are inside of the ovary so i'm going to stop here in our next video, we will discuss pollination and fertilization and we will understand how seeds are made, how flowers change into fruits with seeds inside. What did we talk about in this video? We took that angiosperms are flowering plants, gymnosperms are conifers, they are both seed plants. The male part of the flower is the stamen. The stamen on top, there's the anther. The anther makes the pollen which contains sperm. The female part is the pistil. The pistil, on the bottom of the pistil, there's the ovary. The ovary contains ovules which contains eggs. We also discussed that angiosperms are the most common plants on earth and that seeds have an advantage over spores and that the seeds of flowering plants or angiosperms have an advantage over the seeds of conifers or gymnosperms. I hope you understood today's lesson. Uh, this is part one and next uh, time we are going to discuss more details about sexual reproduction in plants and angiosperms. Thank you. Welcome to Moomoo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about angiosperms and gymnosperms. In major ecosystems, plants form the foundation or base of the system. Plants provide oxygen and energy for many of the other organisms. Plants can be divided into two major categories, angiosperms and gymnosperms. Angiosperms are unique because they produce a seed encased in a fruit. The seed develops in the ovary and the ovary is encased within the plant's flowers. Angiosperms are flowering plants. A typical flower, but not all flowers, has a male portion called the stamen. The stamen contains an anther that produces pollen. The female portion is called the pistil and it contains the ovary. Most flowers have petals that help attract insects that help spread the pollen. Fertilization occurs when pollen falls onto the stigma and a seed's embryo will begin to develop. Some common angiosperms are all plants with fruit light like apples, oranges, and several grasses like sugarcane and wheat and all flowering plants. Gymnosperms, on the other hand, are plants that have a naked seed. In other words, it is not enclosed in a protective enclosure. Many gymnosperms have needle-like or scale-like leaves and deep growing roots. Many gymnosperms have their seeds dispersed by the wind. 
The seed will land and then develop into seedlings and eventually a tree. Some common examples of gymnosperms are pine trees, redwoods, and firs. All coniferous trees are gymnosperms. Coniferous trees are cone-bearing trees. There we go, the difference between angiosperms and gymnosperms. Thanks for watching, and Movie Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.